Okay, just scanning for a target, rolling up, and it'll fire just after it gets up on top. It's probably the baddest thing on the battlefield. This vehicle is nothing but a 70-ton jersey barrier without a crew. The soldiers are what makes that weapon system lethal. The 3rd ID picked their top two tank crews and set them off to train for six weeks. Traverse right with the camera! We met them in the final week of their preparation. You get to play on the big boy platform. Yes, this is the Super Bowl of tanks. The Sullivan Cup is a, is a best tank crew competition. This was the competition before the competition. They were all going to get something out of this experience, but only one crew would get to represent the 3rd ID. We flew to Jacksonville, we picked up our rental car, and we took off for Georgia. We'd be meeting two tank crews at Fort Stewart. While we were driving, we passed the time researching tank facts. The, the, according to this, there's a maintenance challenger, a maintenance heat, so they have to do, um, they replaced an eight block section of tank track. Tank history, tank movies. Now in Fury, they had, uh, they had their war name, remember? Oh, yeah. yeah! Yeah! We're gonna have fun with it, yep. you know? We were all pretty stoked for this story. Now, there are telltale signs that you're in Georgia. There's tons of Spanish moss, there's historic cemeteries, there's that good old feeling of southern charm, there's the alligators. But it was the tank crossing signs that let us know we were in the right place. I've always had an affection for tanks. But it started when I was a young NCO in Korea. This was actually three-quarter inch we were shooting on. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the camera with the umbilical cord, look at that. Young Army Sergeant Lance Milstead driving an M60 tank. That's right, I'm a tanker. Does that qualify me as a tanker? If not, I thought at least it would give me some street cred with the tankers we were about to meet. Time to meet some tankers. Both crews were from Charlie Company 164 Armor. Team Cannonarchy was made up of Smith, Chappies, Bates, and McLean. And Team Count Tracula was made up of Fauntleroy, Felton, Corona, and Martin. Sergeant First Class Todd Poison was responsible for training them and deciding who gets to go to the cup. What's your role with uh, the team from 3rd ID this year? As the Division Abrams Master Gunner, uh, I was given the rare and unique opportunity to create a six-week train-up. Everything tank-related. We spent a lot of time in the motor pool and doing ammunition upload and vehicle ID and land navigation. I created a mount mounted land nav course for them. They did about 250 kilometers in one day. Did a couple of refuels on the move. For those who don't know what the Sullivan Cup is, I know it's, this is the third time they've done yep. it, but, but you know, could you give us a description of, of what the competition entails and what it's about? Uh, the Sullivan Cup is a, is a best tank crew competition. It's a, it's a crew level event. So tank crews are four people, driver, loader, gunner, and tank commander. Um, and it's open to, to uh, our allies. But every active division sends their best tank crew that has tanks. And uh, the National Guard and Marine Corps get to send their guys. And it's, it's to see who the best of the best is. And the first thing that really struck me, I was like, Man, these are, they're like kids. <laughs> they're so young. But we quickly got past the fact that they're so young because they're so passionate and they're so professional and competent. And they really are engaged in what they're doing and being excellent at it. I'm getting the chance to represent an entire division. Yeah, you're one of two teams we consider the best. Right, eight people, and I'm one of them. I'm really grateful for the opportunity. Uh, it's really humbling. 
today's tanks are so high tech that it's actually hard to miss. So as part of the train up, the crews have to face degraded modes of operation. Hey, traverse right with the camera. And it's really hard. Sergeant First Class Roy Smith and his crew were about to find out just how hard it is. That's where a lot of gunners have difficulty, when you have stabilization failure, when you can only use your gas, your gunner's auxiliary site, instead of the primary site. Oh, oh. Whether your LRF is damaged and you have to battle site ranges, manually input ranges, and you have to figure out what those ranges are. You can see that round impact that way. These are all skills that, back in World War II, that was the norm. I created an entire table six of nothing but degraded engagements, and I took almost everything away from them. So I need you to move to the bullpen, where you will receive an AAR. Okay. And the, you guys are a crew. All right, you guys are four parts of that killing machine. It's tough, wasn't it? So with a full-up firing system, Sergeant Smith's crew would have aced that run. But with degraded mode, it's another story. Well, one, as you guys know, we don't get to train degraded mode nearly enough, at least in my opinion. And two, this is also to get you guys ready for when you go out to bedding, that whatever they throw at you out there won't be anywhere near as difficult as what we had here. That was a very good technique. Yeah. And I could see your rounds, you did that whip. That's important. Perfect. Just saturate the target. Put, put lead on that target. They only qualified two out of six engagements. What does it take to get you guys ready? We need to be physical fit. A regular PT test has nothing on this tanker PT test. I score 300s, and I do not max out this tanker PT test. Part of the Sullivan Cup is to have these physical tests uh, of strength and agility that relate to the tank. Place it neatly on the thing. I'll just throw it. Get set. Go. The test is based on the 1974 Armor Crewman Proficiency Test. Talk about a smoke session. It took actual things that you do as a tanker and you have a time limit to, to achieve you know, each of these five tasks in and it's very challenging. It's, it's physically grueling. You can score 300 on an Army PT test and not necessarily be a good loader because you don't challenge muscle groups that you would normally use as a loader doing the APFT. I hope it's here to stay. I really do, because I think it is an amazing, amazing test, physical test. Poison lined up the full arsenal of tools to prepare the team, even some high-tech video games. It's actually called the Close Combat Tactical Trainer. Some of the good things about it is, unlike another simulator that we use, this one, you, the whole crew can get in. Uh, you have driver, actually you see the driver in there right now. Uh, can I take a look in there? I mean, excuse me. This is exactly how it's gonna look when you're inside that. As much as I really wanted to drive a tank, this was as close as I'd get. So this you'd actually look in with your eyeball. Right. Oh, okay. Still pretty cool. So where is the trigger? So that'd be this one right here. Oh, the top one? Yep. Got it. Okay. You know, to your right here, this, this is... This is quite the video game. <laughs> My time as a tank gunner was up. Prepare to defend. The team had their own mission. Carry heat, report red column one. Heat battle carried and red column one. Up! Ultimately, these crews and everything we do is in the name of le lethality. Fire adjust. Uh, it's how fast can we put steel on target. This was the crew's final bit of practice before their last day on the range. Let's make the vision. Over. Yeah, you know, I remember Sergeant Smith talking and he said this vehicle is nothing but a 70 ton jersey barrier without a crew. Tank is a tank. Mm. You put the crew in there and then you have a weapon system and the, the, the soldiers are what makes that weapon system lethal. Alright, now without slipping the scales on a uh, gas bore sight knob, but it goes back to seat and excellence. I mean, I, these guys are gonna take all this training away and they're gonna take what they have picked up here, uh, you know, through the training and uh, mentorship. And they're gonna take that and they're gonna, they're gonna give it back. We'll be down range here in a second. Team Count Tracula is on deck for their last degraded run. It's their last chance to impress. You 
And it's kind of a it's, a, it's a lost art. It's definitely a lost art. You need to practice a lot. And a lot of tank crews don't get the opportunity to practice it, to really get proficient at it like they should be. So, you know, something, uh, Justin, I sense a lot of passion when you talk about this. Just getting the opportunity to even get a shot to prove it is such a big deal to me. Okay, the tank is scanning for a target. It's rolling up, and it'll fire just after it gets up on top. <laughs> you may get picked to go, you may not. Um, you may go, you may win, you may not. You're still going to take something away from this experience, I, I, yeah. I bet. Just getting ready, preparing for the shot, to get a shot to go to the Southern Cup. I have learned probably more in these last few weeks than any other training exercise I've done combined. So we'd only been down here for three days, but they'd been doing this for six weeks, and they still didn't know who was going to go to the Cup. But I'll tell you, they gave it their best shot. It's a win-win-win situation. I'm either going to go back to the force with a whole lot of knowledge, I'm going to go to the Sullivan Cup with a lot of knowledge and opportunity to perform at the Sullivan Cup, or I'm going to the Sullivan Cup with a lot of knowledge and I'll win the Sullivan Cup. This is one of the best opportunities I've had as an Army crewman uh, in my career. And that's what the Sullivan Cup is about.